I'm Brandon Butler, and this is Copyright Session 5, Licensing and Permission. You'll talk in more detail about licenses in the contract session of this institute, but copyright and licensing are so closely connected that we think it's important to say a bit about them here, too. A license is a grant of authorization from a copyright holder to exercise one of their exclusive rights. In a research library context, typically the license is to copy or display protected works. Databases, journal literature, and other electronic content is often made available under a license, either directly to the user or to an institution on behalf of its users. The license tells you which uses have been authorized, and authorization is often conditioned on the licensee doing certain things, most importantly paying. Uh, a licensee may also include promises by the institution or the user not to engage in certain uses or only to use licensed content under certain circumstances. What this means for researchers is that your institution may already have a license that defines what sorts of uses you can make of licensed content. You'll need to read that license or talk to someone who understands the license terms to learn more about which uses are possible. You may also need to negotiate a new license to enable your use, especially if you require special kinds of access to a vendor's content in order to conduct your research. We'll talk a lot more about this in the full session on contracts, but the key thing to understand here is that if your use is permitted by a license, then you don't have to worry about copyright. If it is not clearly permitted, you will need to think about fair use and other alternatives. Fair use may permit uses that are not mentioned explicitly in a license because a fair use doesn't require permission. If your use is expressly forbidden by the license, then even if your use doesn't violate copyright law, you or your institution could still face liability for breach of the contract. The most likely negative consequence for violating a license is that you or your institution lose access to that resource, at least temporarily. Some works are available under public licenses that allow anyone to make specific uses of copyrighted works without the need to pay or seek additional permission from the owner. Creative Commons licenses or CC licenses are the most well-known public licenses. Creative Commons is a nonprofit organization that offers a simple standard way to grant copyright permissions for creative works and a suite of license options that lets authors impose some commonly sought limitations on would-be users. Instead of the all rights reserved default under the law, copyright owners can apply a CC license that allows others to use and share their works without seeking permission. It's important to pay attention to the specific terms of the license <clears throat> In, uh, of the CC license you're working with. Almost all of the CC licenses require attribution. Some can require you to share alike, meaning you need to use the exact same license they did if you incorporate uh, an author's work into your own. Uh, or they may bar the creation of derivative works like translations. For example, a work marked CC by NC means that it is licensed for other people to use and share as long as the work is appropriately credited uh, but commercial uses are not allowed. Creative Commons also offers a tool, CC0, that allows a copyright owner to waive all copyrights and some related rights in works. Because it's a complete waiver of rights, CC0 doesn't require attribution. CC licenses are especially common in the academic world, and research funders increasingly require their grantees to use them. But even non-academic works may be made available under CC licenses. For example, some museums distribute photographs of the works in their collections under open licenses, including CC0. If a text and data mining project involves works that are made available under a license, including a public license, like CC license, these works can certainly be used in ways that comply with terms of the license. If your use is beyond the terms of the license or forbidden by the license, things get more complicated. This issue will be discussed further in the next session on contracts and TDM. And don't forget to consider other legal and ethical issues discussed at this institute when using works made available under license. For example, researchers have documented a bias in machine learning resulting from the widespread use of low friction data. Data sets like the Enron email corpus are widely used because they present uh, fewer legal concerns but the predominantly white male corporate context in which these data sets are created can impart a bias to the analyses and tools that are derived from the corpus.